Welcome to Texas Truck Channel and we're back at the hill. We're gonna take something up here that we have not taken up yet from any of the brands in this configuration. We've got something that's really wide and really long. Brian, what do we got? <laughs> oh boy, you're right up to the right part. We've got a dually, man. We've never had a dually on this hill once. We've had diesels, we've had Raptors, we've had Broncos and all kinds of cool stuff and tons of crossovers. And we've, we've never had a long bed. We've never had a long bed crew cab HD truck. They've all been short beds, like the six and three quarter foot beds. This is a full eight foot behemoth. It's awesome. Um, and look, this is a has a lot of presence, but I don't know it's really meant to go off road, kind of like some of our crossovers. It is a crew cab long bed limited 2024 F350, but it is 4x4. And the good news is, let's start with the front end, Craig. We have a solid front axle down here, which I'm actually really happy with that for the sake of off-road, because it's a stick axle, it can articulate like a Jeep in theory. Now the downside is, see that big old steel coil spring? This thing is meant to tow 24 some odd thousand pounds, which is a absolute mammoth number. And because of that, it's just not gonna flex like a Wrangler or a Bronco would. Anyways, so maybe that won't matter. Maybe it won't help us at all, but we'll see here in just a minute. We do have lockable front hubs. That is not a locking diff. That just locks your hub so that you have a direct drive to all your wheels. And they're auto locking, so you can either like make them be on or make them be auto. That's really what that is right there. Now, let's talk about angles a little bit. Ford de declares there is, what is it, 27 degrees of approach angle is what they're saying from here to there. I no believe way. that. No way. But there's oh, an yeah, air yeah, dam. Yeah, yeah. This is not... I, if they're counting it, they're counting with this folded up. But right. the good news is Ford has designed this to fold around if you bump into something. Which means we'll let it rub a little bit. Right. We're going to have to, I think, to get it up that hill. And then beyond that, we're going to deal with a bunch of wheelbase. So look at the distance between the front wheel and the rear wheel. Ford is saying this has just over 20 degrees of breakover angle, which is enough for this hill. But I think we're going to hear a little bit of dragging down there. Something else I'm concerned about is this has power deployable side steps and they're very expensive and very nice but they are just above the frame rail so in theory if we go over something straight we won't drag them but i don't want to find out at an angle we have a problem so while you're spotting craig help me out with that i'm um, coming down the line here we do have oh oh wait hang on what yeah that's what? uh 6.7 but it's red you know what that means oh yeah ho baby let's talk about the power real quick oh man thank you power hood that helps this is an industrial complex. This is not an engine, this is a science project. And it this works. is what Eisenhower warned about. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, this is a nuke, there's no question about it. Military look, industrial complex. And look at this right here. See how big this oil cooler is, or air cooler is? This is wild. It's insane to see all the things happening here. What's interesting to me is that the thing makes 475 horse and 1,050 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, we got that out of the way. This is the high output one. That, that red letter on the side, that red 6.7, that means 500 horsepower and 1,200 foot-pounds of torque with a warranty. Wait, what? Yeah. 1,200? 1,200. <whistles> that does not mean, oh, you've deleted it and you've tuned it and all this kind of bull crap. No, this is 50 state emissions legal. It makes 1,200 foot-pounds of torque. Now, the way it does that is torque management is what Ford calls it. That's boost by gear. You don't get all that in first gear, but you do in the top end when you need it. So let's... uh. Hop inside and talk about the goodies we have for off-road. Oh, what about these meats? Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting everything. Yeah. So anyways, these wheels are solid aluminum. I do like them. They look like the old Alcoa Ford wheels. And they're 17s, not 19s, not 20s, not 18s. This thing has a lot of meat on the sidewall. But the bad news is this tire is not an all-terrain, Craig. This is the Michelin Highway tire. I call this a Highwayman's tire. It is quiet. It's good for rain. And it never makes road noise but it is not an off-road machine. That is not what these tires are meant to do. They're meant to last about 80,000 miles. I mean, they just, their wear pattern, they just don't wear at all. They last forever. So for towing what this thing needs to do, this is a perfect tire for that. For what we're doing in the hill, maybe not. We're gonna see if that's detrimental here in just a minute. All right, Brian's hopping in here. We do have a few off-road modes. Yes, well, it's not the FX4, we don't have the rear locker, but we got some things. So Brian, uh, show us what we got. Well, first of all, we have this awesome welcome screen, 75 years and all this cool, oh, wait a minute. There are no dials, Craig. This has an actual digital cluster and the big touch screen. Now, as far as off-road, I'm turn this bit off. As far as off-road ability, down here you've got two high, four high, and four low, and then we have drive modes, but we are absent for auto, and we're absent the diff lock, which is a little bit frustrating, and I do know that GM's competitive uh, by trim truck has for auto. We don't have that here. So, but we do have our drive modes. You can go normal, tow, eco, slippery roads, which is silly, or off-road mode, which actually requests for low, but you can do it in four high. 
and it gives you all these different off-road screens and you have a good front camera which is very high res which like bronco-esque it really is that's where it came from for sure so that's it i think we need to start in too high use all four rear wheels and see how far they get us with traction off agreed let's do it let's do it in normal in normal yes all right so like you said we're going to start in one of the lower settings normal mode two-wheel drive no traction we got the limited slip, so it's kind of do, going to do what it's going to do anyways. I don't know that traction control helps at all with the limited slip, but let's see how far we get. Again, it's really long. It's really heavy, and we normally start spinning about right here. Let's see if we can get past that today. He's going to go about two miles an hour as best he can. And we started slipping before that spot, but now we, it's locked up. Okay, the axle's locked. Limited slip, slip is working. Hey, stay there for a second. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, the air dam is really gonna come into play here and create some havoc for us. Um, now what do you think? It's not gonna do it. Okay, let's let's recap real quick. So so far we have. Oh, okay, there goes Craig. All right. There we go. Okay, you haven't fallen in a while. That's good. Um, we did prove that with traction off and a, it's look like, it is at the moment is a four by six at the moment. Right. And the rear four wheels was enough to get it to the hill test. That's really impressive. Did. Yeah. And that's on a highway tire. I'm actually quite impressed with yeah. that. Yeah. Now, stability is off, traction is off, and it's normal mode, and traction control was still stepping in a little bit. Mm. Not a ton. But I was surprised that it, with a turbo to diesel, how easy it was to modulate the throttle. I wasn't having to left foot brake that. A lot of torque to play with down low, a and that's lot. why. Well, get idle, this thing is at 2 PSI. Right. So just keep that in mind over the turbo setup here. Okay, so I think what we're going to have to do here, Craig, is we're going to have to do a bit of the hybrid to try and yeah. get that nose up. Which is very disappointing because it would have... It was going to make it, I think, in okay. two-wheel drive. You know what I'd like to try? And we, we did this with the um, Nissan Path under Rocky Creek. We hybrided it just enough to get the nose up. Mm. I don't think we need to do a full-on 45-degree cut. Right. So maybe let's try and cut the nose just a pinch and see if that works. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. All right so we're going to come back and reset because we're doing a different line, not the same line. And see if we can't help it approach up a little bit. Okay, now he's switching to four high. And normal? Yes. Normal mode still. Get those front wheels to start helping us. And we'll really pay attention to that front air dam. Make sure we don't rip it off. And then you see that front wheel starting to help already. And this is, let's see, that inside wheel is spinning. You see it there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you okay there? Yep. All right. So I'm thinking what we need to do. How's that nose looking? The nose so far is okay. I'm still really worried about it, but uh, okay. Gonna try off-road mode. I think we need to try four low because I'm getting I'm getting some torque surge. Yep. I don't know if you saw the tires doing that, just for controlling purposes. Right. It's not about it's not adding grip. It's adding control. And I think we need to try off-road mode to see if it can control wheel speed a little bit. So we're gonna do off-road mode, which puts it in the four low by yeah. default. And then we're going to, that also has, and then it has traction management as well. So we'll see if that does it. Right. Go. So like it went. Okay, four low went. By the way, the heads up display now, um, let's see if I can show people, I don't know if it'll show up or not. Heads up display now has, it may not be coming up right in here. Um, my inclinometer is 100 degrees and your pitch and roll, that's pretty cool. And it shows you on the left side, that its front and rear diffs are locked. Nice. And now in four low, it defaults to second gear start. Well, front and rear diffs aren't locked. I'm sorry. Front and rear diffs are, are actually activated. So gotcha. transfer case is turned on. Gotcha. All right, so let's see what happens here with off-road mode engaged. We'll get over here without slipping. It's a very loose surface. And that's the same thing. Same thing I'm struggling with with the truck struggling with. There's not a lot of grip. There's a lot of loose stuff on us. Let's see what four low does. You're trying to... Uh... Okay, so normally we wouldn't do this, 
Um, what's happening here is we've got a lot of weight on that front axle. Yeah. We're just gonna have to reset it a little bit to help okay. it out because it's just gonna dig itself a little hole and it's sliding to the left a little bit. Uh, okay. So now we're not on the same line. We need to get back to the same line we're at because we moved to the left because of all that weight. It's, so it's walking your right. Normally we wouldn't reset, but that's why we're doing it. This I think time. we have to. And also we were trying a very uh, mild hybrid line. I think if we do a proper 45 degree, it'll be better. Yep. Okay. Like we said, we'll reset here. We're in four low now, got off-road mode from the get-go. We're gonna try a different line because we were just walking to the left. Not at all. And uh, at least at that particular angle, there is no way that's happening. Ah, uh, that, that front uh, air dam is just gonna get destroyed. Really? Just completely folded do up. Do you think we do another angle? Is it folded right now? It's folded pretty good right now. So that backup is my problem. No, you know, I uh, just needed it real slow. All right, we'll guide that. Let's try okay. one more attempt after this. Hang on, hang on. Okay, sl slow. Cut all, yeah, there you go. You're good. Okay. So one of the things that's happened here is that this truck is so heavy, it's really dug this out and made it even looser than it normally is. You can see the rut that we have here. We don't normally develop a rut like that with the front wheel on any of the vehicles going up here, and that's creating a problem. I want to try one more attempt at that. Try, so we're going to try one more with a little bit more... A little more gumption and a little slightly less angle on it. Don't do too much gumption because I can't stop you and it's be too okay. late. Okay. So. Okay, here we go. We're going to try one more, maybe a little bit different angle. Um, this thing's just so heavy, it's digging in. Two pedal, get the limited slip. I am. Oh, okay. There we go. There we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. How's the belly? Looks good right now. Okay. How's this driver's side? Driver's side, you're fine. Uh, the duels are going to help you here. Okay. We're still in four low. You're good. You're good. Oh, yeah. It's good. All right, Brian. Well, that was uh, interesting to say the least. Holy cow. Um, what happened there is the limited slip just wasn't engaging as much as we needed to. You were not getting locked to lock on that right there. Well, and that's the difference between a limited slip and a locker. So limited slip is meant like, oh, I'm in the rain and I floor it. And both wheels are at motion already. It'll help balance left to right, but it won't lock right to right. So for right. drifting on pavement, you want a limited slip. Yep. For off-road, you want a locker. So even at low speeds with high right. torque, this... 12 pounds torque, it's just overrunning the clutches right. and the limited slip, it can't do it. Which it's interesting though, because the G80, the mechanical locker in the uh, Chevy's does work, but it kind of, once it gets, it's in, it's yeah. in, it stays, and that wouldn't happen in here. Good point, and you can, on those, you can't tell it when to be on, but right. once it's on, it's on. And it stays, and this, right. this was not doing that. And that was really hard in there, you can kind of see that you had the passenger wheel turning and the driver wheel turning on yeah. the front, and nothing else in sync so helping it. So, I could see out the window here, because it's throwing rocks up, on, and I could see in that, uh, the tow mirror, the rear tires, we're just spinning. And so, I don't know if you saw on camera or not, but basically as we're going up, I decided to be the limited slip and I had about 50% brake force. And then it started to slow down the two hung tires yeah. and it started to walk. Yeah, that's um, exactly, yeah. And that it, it made a huge difference. So it's good to show you that, you know, if you don't have walkers, this is kind of like the, the trailman's trick. Sure. Um, you can left foot brake to get up. And by the way, at, at one point, I had all the braking force I could give it. Wow, because you had so much torque. I found the bottom of the brake pedal, and then, <laughs> okay. it, but I had enough torque that it didn't care. It just drove past them anyways. Very so. good. And this also goes to show you how much, look, tires are important, but what's more important than anything else is our angles. Angles, absolutely. And look, if you bought this truck and you, for some reason you needed to off-road a lot with the dually, just take the air dam off. Take the air dam like, off or get a different spec that doesn't have that. That's what you did. They make a trimmer for that. Yeah. So. With that, thanks for watching. We enjoy taking up things up here that shouldn't be up here. Look, I don't know what this thing weighs. It weighs a lot, and you can it, tell by the over uh, eight. It's over eight. Uh, yeah, you can tell by the ruts we were making on the front. We don't have any vehicle that makes ruts like, like that no. coming up. 
Um, so lots of fun. Shouldn't be up here, but also your dual wheels. Once you got past that point, they were helpful. It helped your brake over because it was going to stay so far to the right. <laughs> the rear, it, it never the rear, dipped so, down. <laughs> good point. The rear didn't sidestep at all the whole time, and the nope. front was just all the weights up here, and it's yeah. going everywhere. By the way, that's the hardest from the driver's seat vehicle we've put up here before. Yep. It definitely took the most effort from for me to sure. end you as spotting. It was the hardest thing we brought up the hill. Yep. So that yep. was cool, but it got it done. It did. So good job, Ford. Uh, I do think that I would just spec a locker if I were buying one of these, no matter what. Yeah, I just get, would. Get the FX4 if you're doing any well, off-roading. Or, or independently ask for the locker. You can do that. This one just doesn't have That'd it. Nice. So yep. anyways. So uh, please sure to, be sure to subscribe and like the channel. That's how we can do more of these. We're going to take them all up here if you all do that. Also. Leave us in the, in the comments. Let us know how dumb we are at driving and spotting. <laughs> we love reading those. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>